anymore. My fucking wife, yeah. Everybody's fucking my wife. Everyone can get some. As long as you putting it tight. Creech has an open pussy policy. I was talking about your wife. No one bangs my wife. This song is by you, yeah. Wait, you're doing my voice. <laughs> it sounds just like me. <laughs> so we've got just endless bevos right here. This is huge. You have six bevos. Yeah. I have two. Um, I got a little coffee. I got a little wawa. You've got a Klarbrun. The SS's favorite sparkling water. <laughs> yeah. Mangala's choice <laughs> drink. I came in and had some sun chips and some hummus and some little cheese balls and then cracked an Izzy, a Clar Bloom, had a coffee, and now I got my backup coffee right here. Because I believe in staying hydrated and cheesed up during the pod. And people say, sun chips, those aren't good for you. And I say, uh, check the data. Who says they're not good for you? People who know about nutrition. Nutritionists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People who live to be 105. People in green zones, as we say. Mm. Well, I trust my mouth. And my mouth says, gimme, gimme, sun chip time. I trust my ass more than I trust my mouth. Because my ass will tell me if what I had was too spicy. Mm. Dude, after I had, I had pho here on Tuesday. We're in Madison, Wisconsin. I've been here for a week. I had fun here on Tuesday, and I went to ride the electric bike back to the hotel, about a 20-minute bike ride. Whoo, that was a real nail-biter, because <laughs> that fun gets in me. I drink the broth, and I load up with the exo sauce, so I can dip, not in the bowl. I'm not a fucking plebe. So I'm dipping. I go through about four little saucers full of exo sauce, and then about five minutes on that bike ride, it's a race against your own butt. And it was, pants treason. This was the same ride where you were surprised stoned. Oh, dude, I've been surprised stoned a bunch. It sucks. Yeah, shout out to the super fan who fucked you. Yeah, that this dude, No Claire, is like, hey, you got Lee, you want to smoke some New Mexico hash? And I was like, I have to drive three hours back to Madison? No. I've already had seven beers. All right, I'm fine. I can't put any hash in this. I don't want to be reckless. And then all of a sudden, uh, he takes my rolling tobacco, and then out of nowhere, hands it back, says, put some hash in there. I was like, you put it in loose? And he's like, oh, you'll be able to tell. And no. So now I've rolled cigarettes the last three days, and every now and then it just smells all like incense and peppermints, and I'm fucking blasted out of nowhere at two in the afternoon. What did incense and peppermints sing? Summer Breeze? No, the song is... Incense and peppermint, strawberry wine. Uh, Everybody's grooving and everything's fine. Ride the magic carpet back to Shangri-La, the Taj Mahal. That's a good one. It's a great song. But yeah, you were high as hell, freaking out. Where do my feet go? Mm -hmm. What if I'm the bike? Mm -hmm. Do ears listen? <laughs> Is it the tiny hairs <laughs> that are actually doing the work? Oh, Celia, you line my lungs. Remember that song? No. Okay. So we're here live. We're going to be doing commentary on the Army-Navy game. It's, it's a real... This is me after pho on the bicycle. This is a nail-biter. It's 7-0. Mm -hmm. The teams have accounted for four yards of passing here right at the beginning of the second quarter. And... What everyone wants to know is how many of the people in the stands today will be acquitted of war crimes? <laughs> how many of these people will have to go in front of a military tribunal and say, I was just following orders? What percentage will have dead eyes when they come home and can't play with their kids what because percentage of what they've done? will flip out every time a doorbell rings? <laughs> Who's not going to be able to sleep without a pistol underneath their pillow? Who's going to go to the other side and not come back? Who will family annihilate? And when they do, how many people will they take with them? Dishonorable discharge, that's when you come on the flag while wearing your full <laughs> military uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I was just following orders. He said I needed to make 50 stars. <laughs> <laughs> God, I had a second person critique my universe shirt. Those aren't really stars, man. This fucking guy, there's not really stars on there, dude. Oh, wait, there are a couple, but the rest is what, cum? And yeah, I was the guy like, said oh, it looked you like got cum. Me. You yeah. got my ass. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a, a fan here who's a cop. It's a real mixed bag. 
I don't mind the cop guy because I think that I'm going to need a way out of some trouble that I get into. He's got one way out, and it's F.A., family annihilation. He's going to take them all with him because, God forbid, they get to live a life without him around where they could thrive. That guy's been to see me do a bunch of shows in Milwaukee and surrounding. Good guy. And he just has cop body. He's just, like, somehow wider than he should be. Yeah. It looked like he was wearing, like, a bulletproof... He had shoulder Columbia pads jacket. On. Yeah, he had shoulder pads on. He was wearing a helmet. He looked like Road Warrior Animal. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> His face was painted. He was nuts. Yeah, he kept saying, what a rush. That's Hawk. Dude, we filmed a big special last weekend in Natty, down there in Natway. Big Naturals. Um, people were trying to figure out, where is it going to be? When will I be able to see it? You'll be able to see it December 26th. And I'm not going to tell you where, but... Uh, it's going to blow your fucking mind. Onlyfans.com. Everything is going to change when I dominate the OnlyFans platform. You did. I think it was a good move to cover your bases because, you know, different strokes for different folks. You did a couple of your sets clothed right. and a couple nude. So you have the option. If you want, you can, you know, check out Sam's entire body on full display. Yeah. At the end, he turns around and bends over. Mm-hmm. Touches his toes. Yep, and a little flag shoots out of my butt that says bang. Yeah, so if you want, you know, if that's if that's your thing, then you can go to OnlyFans and see that. And if you'd rather uh, Sam have more clothes on than the original, then you could just kind of maybe scribble some on or black out his body. Well, I did the Sunday show completely nude but wearing sunglasses. Sunglass Sunday. So no one's going to be able to tell it to me. <laughs> no one will be able to tell it's my body I got to see 90% of you when you first opened the door to your hotel room Wasn't that a fun gag? It was fun, the little towel, it was a good time One came it- to the door, I opened the door while having just a little tiny tea towel over my genitals Everything else on display and rugged I also had, you know what would have been funny is if we both would have done that You think that you're going to get one over on me and you open the, the door, I'm in the hallway <laughs> Just the little, just the little rag, covering my my tiny guy. Uh huh. Or if you had like a little parasol, like a drink uh, umbrella yeah, that you put yeah. in like a cocktail on the <laughs> yeah. beach, and you're there just holding it. Or it's in the tip of your urethra. Penis colada. Oh God. Yeah. Remember when Kevin O'Brien dug out the tip of his urethra because he thought he had a UTI? No. So he put a Q-tip in there, and he was crippled for like three weeks? No. Oh, my God. What a dipshit. Yeah, he's like, ah, uh, I know how to take care of it, old man. DIY urology. Yeah, and he just put a fucking Q-tip with like lye or bleach on the tip? No. Yes, in the tip of his crank. Not lye. Maybe bleach. I think it might uh, have been saltpeter or something. Simple green? Yeah, dude. God, that was one of Kevin's big ideas. Mr. Clean. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dip a Q-tip in Mr. Clean. Wee, ooh, ee, ooh. <laughs> a little chimney sweep. Detergent. <laughs> Skin of a rinky dinky dink. That's wild. I don't remember that, but I do believe it. Yeah, it was nuts. And then Mara was complaining. She's like, I haven't been dug out in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Sam, you're looking pretty tasty. I'm like a starving woman being offered a big ham. Why don't you come over here and glaze me? Can you glaze me? <laughs> Can you change me? <laughs> what was that guy's name and meet the fuckers? Jeff? Greg. Greg. Can you change me, Greg? I've got a butthole. <laughs> I wear a diaper. Can you change me? Whoa, stump cowboy on the TV screen. <laughs> Miss, missing a leg. <laughs> Oh shit! She's a veteran. She has a stump. They make her crawl up the stairs like a dog. They don't make her. <laughs> she just crawled up the stairs on her butt like a reverse it, crab creature. It doesn't mean that somebody made her do that. Yeah, it means that did. she wanted to do that. She they has autonomy. <laughs> well, she didn't want maybe, to have to. Maybe it go up like The Exorcist. Maybe it wasn't in war. Maybe she had uh, body dysmorphia, and she's like, "This leg's gotta go." Yeah, this leg's a boy, and I'm a girl. <laughs> Get out of <laughs> here. This leg belongs to MC. <laughs> hammer <laughs> not me i have no connection to that leg <laughs> holy shit dude she, she has that cowboy hat well david robinson is there of course but he's admiral. cheering for army you know he's gay now they're calling him the rear admiral <laughs> thank you that's what purvis. You <laughs> purvis. Hi, <I'm> purvis mcmahon <laughs> 
We got uh, a guy with the last name of Purvis. <laughs> and he's just out there. He's just allowed to play. We got Tezka, <laughs> Purvis, Heidenrich. I put a little prop bet in on this game of one touchdown pass, and it hit. So that rules. But only one. Only so one touchdown pass. Over 0.5 touchdown passes in this game. Oh, over. Dude, you know what's crazy I about running exactly the wing tee is the center is on a four-point stance, which is very difficult to snap the ball while also having the other hand dug into the dirt. Mm-hmm. That's like a really tough thing. And it's only applicable to this skill set. So if that center somehow, if every other center in the world passes away from like a secret bug bite toxin, then... He's going to have to go play for every NFL team. Okay, sorry. Let's talk more about how that lady didn't want to crawl up the stairs like a dog. Lund, wake up. What happened? Lund, Ian's Pizza is here. I wish. Let's get a couple pizzas, huh? A couple pizza pies. Do you think pizza pie day? I'm starving. (laughs) You're starving. I'm hungry. You ate... A yard of A couple of Twix. pieces of sushi. Oh, my God. A couple I pieces. I kept it light and breezy. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing you can do if you ever get to hang out with Lund in a situation where one of you has to order is let Lund order. Because I would have ordered maybe two rolls you no, know, of you sushi. Would, you would have you ordered, ordered one you roll ordered for you nine. and one for me. I wouldn't have gone absolutely loco. I didn't go loco. I you had the contagion. seven rolls. And guess what? We ate them comfortably over the course of a few hours, and it was delightful. No, last night so after you're the welcome. second show, we were like, all right, we got to do it. And no, we ate the rest no, of them. No. no, it was great. I did a good job. I'm glad I didn't get eight. I thought about getting an eighth. <laughs> but... Uh, Showed a little restraint. Saved the club a couple bucks. The club pays for everything. They have a Papa Shop machine in here. A I'm pool not, table you can see behind us. I'm not leaving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to... Hey, Creech, suck it. Hey, I'm, Creech, I live squatter's here. rights. I'm going to be here. You're going to be all right. I'll send you money. I'm going to pose as a statue in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch yeah, everyone. You can be Zeus. Uh-huh. I want to know who that is. Uh, I think that is Hera. Big old bust of a... I'm guessing an, an ancient Greek... Was he a diddler? Was he a pedo? Is no, it okay because, because it was 4 BC or whatever? It's because they had like more open-minded ideas for what and was not a crime. Everybody pedo. Everybody bangs boy. Oh, yeah. What about the revelation last night that we have been fucking up the Mortal Kombat line? We thought it was whoopsie. Just like everyone else who's not a complete virgin dork. Rich Damore says actually... He pushed his glasses up and he said, "Well, actually, hey you guys, uh, I hate to, my spreadsheet. I hate to burst your bubble, but, but it's, it, it's actually toasty. Toasty. Everyone, what look, the fuck? Words are always in flux. What they have do new meanings all the time. What does that mean? Was I, I, I'm curious if there was also like a previous iteration where it was whoopsie. I don't get it because I don't. I don't know. I played this the is shit the Mandela out of those effect, games. dude. This is erasure." This is real. We're yeah, being, this is a race. We're being a race. I'm sick of being a race by people. <laughs> Whoopsie. I, I'm real. I'm real, damn it. There's not a big enough fucking broom to sweep me under the rug. I bleed blood. I, I pooped shit. <laughs> One time I pooped blood. <laughs> That's what One I get time for I eating bled all that. shit. What's happening here? Uh, time to take your pills. Oh, whoa, a WhatsApp audio call from a strange number. Hello? Yeah, you should answer it. Hey, good. What's going on? I'm podcasting. Let me call you back. It's all right. James McMahon, everyone. Who's Jimmy McMahon? Uh, James McCann is a comedian moving to America from Australia. From Australia, and he won't leave you alone. That's right. James, <laughs> take the hint. Hey, why don't you Google how to make it in stand-up in America and then figure it out? Yeah, just get Richard Belzer's book like all of us. And dressed like a priest in blackface. Did you, did you read Belzer's book? No, fuck okay, no, okay. dude. Uh, I never read one stand-up comedy book. You're, I read a bunch of improv the, books. You haven't read any Dave Barry? No, I, I haven't either. No. He wrote like fifteen books. Some people love them, but yeah, I don't, and they I don't were all about him. like a crocodile who steals an ATM in Florida somehow. Mm, I don't even know if that's Dave Barry wrote mostly about Florida because he wrote for like the Miami Herald. Oh, okay, remember he had his own show. Dave Barry had a television show starring the judge from Night Court. Hmm. Okay. That white guy, he, wore, he like wears the weird like Inspector Gadget hat now. Harry. 
Harry was the character's name, yeah. Right, so Harry had his own show where he's Dave Barry, and he's just like opining on what's going on down Florida way. And he's sassy. And no, no, he's like over it. He's always reading a newspaper, and then his daughter would be like, a chimpanzee stole my balloon. And he'd be like, that's monkey business. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm laughing. I, yeah. I'm laughing. Yeah. I can't wait. Huh? Give me more. I, I hope there were a dozen seasons. There was a bunch of weird fucking sitcoms back in the day. Wings. I watched Wings nonstop. It was about a regional airport somewhere in New England. Wings is very funny. Tony Shalhoub was in it? Yeah. Yeah. He, he was, was like holding the airport killer. The he airport was a rapist. Creep. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. It was the dark. He was the villain. You have to have a bad guy for a little tension, you know? If you become the villain, you get to be the hero eventually. Wings, yeah, Wings is solid. This is funny to me. So the Army-Navy game, they always cut to the different divisions who are placed around the world. Yeah. And it's like these guys all just worked like 24-hour shifts on the border of Poland with Ukraine. And they're like, wake up. We got to watch the worst football game of the year. And they're like, oh, oh, I'm out of Benny's. What am I going to do? There's not enough coffee in the world. I miss my kids. And then they have to stand at attention and salute for the national anthem as their eyes are like twitching. <laughs> they're just covered in blood. Yeah. They're coming back from patrol. <laughs> Wake up. You guys have to be our puppet. This is for national security. A lot of these offensive linemen can't ride a horse because <laughs> they're too big oh yeah don't put a horse through that nightmare save a horse kill an offensive line right alignment yeah uh what else it's still seven nothing so that's great <laughs> i can't wait to see who ends up six and six yeah this, at the end of this dog fight <laughs> no one's going to a bowl game why is the flag reversed on their arm that's not cool, man. That That's, means you're in distress, man. Yeah. Well, they are in distress, man. You know, it might be an ambulance thing where uh, they want people to see it correctly in a rear view mirror. Oh, nice, nice stop by that CB. It might have been the safety. Anyway, uh, people love when we <laughs> are distracted by sports on the TV. I know that much. Well, look, people like when we do live commentary on games that happened two days ago. And when this look, comes out. We look good, too. This is, Shout out Alec for the setup. Making us look real nice. God, comedy at Club on State makes every other club look like you just, it's like you hit this club and then next weekend you go to a place and it's like they steal your shoes, they put a bunch of fucking Legos on the ground and they make you run through it. Mm-hmm. That's every other club experience compared to this. Well, you worked your way up to the the top level of clubs. And so, yeah, we're, we've been spoiled. And I had didn't have too many like nightmare interactions, you know. Didn't do a lot of clubs uh, before these. Yeah. But I I know how bad it can be. Where like nobody talks to you when you come in. You act like you're doing. They act like you're doing something wrong. Yeah. It's like you're coming by in needing a drink or something, or they charge you, and it's yeah. It's like you're there to like do like forensic accounting and see who's embezzling money, and no one right. trusts you. Right. Yeah. I remember at the Looney Bin in Tulsa, they made me swallow a goldfish before they gave me the condo key. Mm-hmm. That is how we know you're cool. <laughs> they just haze you. Yeah. I remember I did the uh, Bridgeport Stretch Factory, and before I was allowed in, I was texting the booker, and he's like, "Show me, send me a picture of your butthole so I know that you're not a narc. <laughs> it's nuts. What? Yeah. I just send a guy a picture of my butthole. Year? I don't know, because there's some big developments. <laughs> Oh, we'll yeah, see. that's right. You're going through puberty. I am, yeah. My Again, tits are coming in. <laughs> second puberty, which, I mean, you could make some money off of it because I don't think it's happened before. It happens every day because of the hormones in the milk. Second puby. You're going to have a second dick. I would like to have... An adult dick comes in. Yeah. <laughs> Your hey, get out of here, little guy. <laughs> Your kid dick falls off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have to wear it as a necklace. <laughs> 1926. Yeah. Soldier imagine feet. imagine wearing a tiny dick as a necklace. And you're yeah, like, just hey. a little shriveler. You pull it out. You're like, uh, hey. second puberty came in. <laughs> Who I'm, wants to choke? I'm a big boy now. Prepare to get gaped because this guy is no longer in service. <laughs> no, that's not a sixth toe I had removed. <laughs> no, I wasn't born with multiple pinky toes. Uh-uh. This is <laughs> my baby dick. And now, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> a horse cock. Yeah. Dude, last night on stage, I had the I had a rip in my pants because I was totally just letting those pants wear and tear. Mm-hmm. I had I told you I've been in them for ten days straight, right? Unwashed, punishing them. 
<laughs> the pants whimpering. Kill yeah. me. Please. This you, is no fate for pants. Give me to a street person. <laughs> <laughs> give me to someone with toxic diarrhea. That'd be better. <laughs> his balls are eating their way out because his dick stinks so much. <laughs> They're fleeing. So, yeah. Uh, but last night on stage, they ripped a little bit more. And I was like, oh, yeah, I got to rip in these pants. And then I had a kid in the front row hold the mic, and then I went and stood as he held the mic to my dick, like he was interviewing my crotch, mm -hmm. and I ripped him real loud, and that was that was a big move. Yeah, yeah, big pop. Oh, people loved it, dude. I was up here watching you on the TV, but I was talking to Megan, so I had you down real low, and mm -hmm. I saw it, and I was like, oh, I wonder if it made a real nice sound. Yeah, and the way you reacted, <laughs> I could tell it was great. It was perfect. <laughs> it's funny to be on the phone with your wife, just getting the shit bored out of you, and meanwhile, you see your buddy on stage creating. A a viral moment <laughs> you're like oh what's no, that it was best of both worlds oh yeah george george michael rolled talk, over talk to my wife watch you wait how many seizures did mama like have a diamond hold on sam's doing something cool wow i'm so lucky to be his friend I was what in, did he I was do nathan what did he do up there lund uh he had a other, he lund, had a hole in his preach. pants and he ripped it and now everyone's doing the worm wow we're divorced what? Yep, that's what happened. Okay, you thank won. you for yes and You won. <laughs> I picked you. Yeah, you did pick me. It's snowing in uh, Trinidad. And that's your but Trinidad not here. update. Also, the county coroner's got, he got busted because they found like several bodies in one grave and one of the bodies might belong to, uh, well, the body belonged to the man, but <laughs> it was a guy that was missing for like, six seven months and you know several people his family were looking for him and worried and he was like 80 and so yeah it's pretty fucked up it's so funny you guys just have loose corpses i don't <laughs> just, know why you just bury you me loose loose corpses yeah because there's not a coffin involved didn't i from what I understand from the story you've told me, they just found a bunch of bodies like buried six inches deep in the dirt somewhere. I think there might have been three bodies in one grave or something. Three in one grave. I think so. And you wouldn't describe that as loose, loose. corpses? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Those are people with families that love them. <laughs> I wouldn't describe them as loose like change in your pocket you're taking a stance for these i just don't understand vagrants. why you're like making fun of trinidad because of loose bodies and it's because like, this it's is scandal. the big news it's fucked up it's not silly it's fucked up it's incredibly grow silly up? to have random bodies and to that be in the cover of the tidbits do you guys have tidbits yeah <laughs> of course you do that's how everyone gets their news is that a national thing uh i don't know we had it in elizabeth i think it's just like a small town way to sell like ads, ads for the local yeah. pizza place yeah. Was Mutiny advertising tidbits? No, that was a scandal in and of itself because the dude that runs it is maybe a little bit of a grifter. Yeah. And Megan was like, no, nah, we're good. Oh, he, he was like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a free spread for a few months or something. And they were like, oh, okay. And then like seven months later, he was like, hey, so just wanted to get, uh, get you caught up, you know, for the last four months. And she was like, I didn't want to pay for an ad. Yeah. So it was a little bit weird. Yeah, but if you read tidbits, it rocks. It's nah. the best. It'll be like, in 1856, a dog was voted to be the mayor of Burlington, Vermont. <laughs> and that dog waged war against Nassau, New Hampshire. <laughs> the dog war claimed 1,700 casualties over one bloody week. <laughs> I don't know if ours is, is as cool as that. In <laughs> Reno, Nevada, it's illegal to be a woman. <laughs> that is true. I went to college there. Oh, yeah. It was dudes only. It ruled. <laughs> yes, a lot dude. of keg stands and mm -hmm. arm wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Playing grab ass. Uh -huh. I, I minored in grab ass. <laughs> right. You majored in Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> Counter-Strike, actually. Counter-Strike. That's right. Dude. I was... Yeah, I'm old. You were ranked. Pre-COD, we had counter Counter-Strike. Pre-COPD, we just had Black Lung. One of my... One of my... Uh, Gamer tags was Madonna Wayne Gacy, <laughs> which we were, we just talked about Marilyn Manson's band, band members. Yeah, because I liked Ginger Fish, the drummer. Mm -hmm. And you know how they all got their names, obviously, right? Yeah. It was like a sex The Marilyn pot. Manson thing. Right, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, he invented it. He was the, his is the best one. Marilyn Manson is the, the best combination of 
a sex icon <sighs> and a murderer. Yeah. Madonna Wayne Gacy is a little forced. Uh huh. Twiggy Ramirez, pretty good. That one's cool because it just sounds like a guy who would sell you hash. Yeah. Yeah. He would uh, sneak some hash into your loose leaf tobacco. I mean, it's a nice thing to do on paper, but hash disintegrates, and then you just have like little particles, and then you hit that flame to it, and all of a sudden, you're just like, <laughs> uh, you guys are dentists? The first show last night was all dentists, and a dentist threw up all over her party. 29 dentists were in the back. One woman just sprayed like a fucking sprinkler. All yeah. the way ah. She was screaming yeah. while puking. Ah. Just head back. Just a fountain of vom. Ah. And her Fuck. Nose, but they couldn't <laughs> boot her. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> My boots. <laughs> <laughs> My tits. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, and uh, shit, it was, they couldn't boot her because her husband was paying for 29 people. So a woman just threw up during my set, and then they had to sit there in the vomit, because otherwise (laughs) the tab wouldn't get picked up. She had to eat it. Yeah. Eat Uh, your puke. I was on stage, like, eat your puke, dog woman. (laughs) Slurp it up. Get her a spoon. (laughs) She loves it. Dentists eat puke. The whole crowd's <laughs> cheering. One of the one of the best things you said in that set was uh, dentists, huh? Yeah, you guys love to just look at decay your whole lives and then kill yourselves, huh? That's mm-hmm. your thing. Yeah, <laughs> it was so funny. That's your whole thing. Huh? Did they like that? I don't think they liked anything. It was the crowd wasn't mic'd up here. No, so it was hard to tell how much things were hitting. Well, I was up there just like so. It, it was weird. There was like ninety dentists, and then. It was two, there were two parties of two dentists. rival dental squads. And yeah, forty nine or something. Teeth collecting gangs took over the club last night, and and then it was people who wanted to see me. So I was, you know, it was like I was at war, and I had a faction of droogs, and then fucking, you know, tartar tasters. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think they liked me. And I told you I was like, I'm not going to wait down here. I think I just ate it. And then we, you were like, stand by the door, say hi to everyone. And I did, and everyone was like, you're the best. That's the best show I've ever seen. Thank you mm-hmm. so much for coming to Madison. Yeah, I and got I was that. like, all right. I pulled you back from the brink. You were going to come up here and listen to Linkin Park real loud by yeah, yourself. I was going to be crawling in my skin. <laughs> I was going to lay on that pool table and put the sushi on my nude body and have you eat it off. <laughs> well, shit, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> that would have been cool. But no, the thing uh, that you have, uh, you've done that, well, you haven't done that to me, like, because I didn't think I did well, but now that more people come to see you, as opposed to random folks that'll just say, like, oh, that was great, Uh people who love the pod, love you, Uh love your book, you gotta gotta say, hey. Yeah, you do. Until it, like, reaches critical mass where it's just too much, and people are, like, tearing at you, like, Beatles style, like, Jacko style, Wacko Jacko. Wacko Jacko. Just screaming, and like, yeah, crying. Then, mm-hmm. then you have to bail after the show. You, yeah. can't, you can't be attacked. Yeah, we don't need you to be Mark David Chapman when people are ripping their ears asshole. off and trying to put them into my watch. Pocket. I want an ear. Give yeah. me a tooth. Give the me a tooth. Like, Give me your teeth. We're here for the teeth. <laughs> Give me that little penis around your neck. <laughs> <laughs> I want a part of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know, dude. It's cool. People come. Then you retreat. But yeah. Uh, there were quite a f- and I yeah th- there were quite a few people in that crowd that were not dentists that were criminals that there were a lot of toothless people B. in there yeah people who yeah steal teeth from the dead mm-hmm. railroadmen highwaymen highwaymen yeah highwaymen get railroaded boxcar willies yeah dude god steamboat johnsons i have been r- just totally romanticizing the idea of being well i want to say like a cool washboard playing hobo who has like a top hat that he eats chili that he makes out of (laughs) but but i've honestly just been like you know i don't have an address what if i just lived outside what if i was homeless and had a tent no one knew where i was until i showed up to the comedy club like right before i go on stage on thursday you'd save money just no phone you know oh, what <laughs> yeah just out there no way to get booked or yeah what? well Pay i mean I, my agent has me booked i go to a payphone every saturday <laughs> to find out like where i'm supposed to be the next weekend <laughs> now, i'm not saying okay, i'd hop so a train it's... i'd still fly first class to the shows but i get here and i just have a bindle and i'm like can i do my, my scrubbings <laughs> i gotta launder my garments that's what i'm talking about 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, let's... I go up on stage, there's like flies surrounding me. <laughs> yeah, you reek. Uh huh. You stink really bad. I stink so bad. <laughs> My shoes are mostly duct tape. I go on stage, I just eat an apple with a knife off the blade and do like Mark Twain esque <laughs> musings, you know? Oh, really? So, like, the, the big river keeps on churning. You say it. <laughs> yeah, I say it, I spray it. <laughs> you get rewarded for it. Uh, yeah, I'm up there, I'm sitting in a big, like, uh, <laughs> I'm sitting in a big wash basin. <laughs> scrubbing. Uh -huh, I'm on stage scrubbing myself while being like, those mountains are bigger than the national debt, mm -hmm. you know, pointing to a woman's breasts. <laughs> like, can I see them? I just up there sexually harassing women from my wash tub, and people are like, this is a new direction. This is weird. It's kind of folksy. We like it. <laughs> oh, they like it. Who's got the biggest okay. pussy in the room? Because <laughs> I don't have a house, and I'm looking for new tent flaps. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. So who out there is down to fuck me while wearing a mask? So you're also single or in an open relationship? And he's dead. Okay. <laughs> it's my fantasy. This see? is act, act two. Yeah. <laughs> no, Emmy moved on. She's married to Shaq. Oh, God. She's married to Shaq. Can uh, you imagine? And it just totally broke my brain. <laughs> and this is the way that I've reacted to it. You're like the dude on the corner right now. I'm out there. I'm Mark singing Paul about sharks. Something. Gossler. No, it's not. <laughs> it I is. wish it was. Yeah. I wish it was fucking Zach Morris, but it's not. It's some guy. Daniel Johnston, but not super talented. Madison's Daniel Johnston. Just troubled. Yeah. Violent. Uh-huh. So I'm out there. I'm just a total loose cannon. People don't know if I'm going to show up or not. I keep missing weekends. People are like, can you talk to him, Nathan? I'm nowhere to be found. You Well, yeah. You, they know where you are. Trinidad. You're reading tidbits. <laughs> I'm running tidbits. You're running tidbits. I take it over. I do it right. I would also, actually... Also, I run for county coroner. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody. I'm Nathan Lund. We got to get these bodies together. They're loose. This is... This should not be divisive, but I think that each body deserves its own grave. <laughs> I don't think we should pile bodies on top of one Quit another stacking like... the bodies. Like my predecessor, <laughs> and so I would love to be able to do a one-body, one-grave policy. <laughs> also... I uh, my makeup game is on point. I will turn your uggo into a star. <laughs> Who wants to bury a pig? <laughs> Send him to heaven looking his best. You can't put lipstick on a pig, but you can put a little rouge on your Uncle Jerry and make him look his best before he goes to meet his creator. Look, if your daughter dies with an A cup, I'll make sure she goes into the ground with double Ds. I stuff them. I puff them. <laughs> Sometimes, if I have two bodies and I think I could do a little mix and match and improve both i'll go ahead and do that that's yeah. my job and it's at my discretion to I improve your loved ones one body but i won't stop from moving a hot head onto an uggo's corpse <laughs> and if she's stacked i'll bury her with a ugly guy's head who cares <laughs> who cares i'm the only one who knows these bodies are mine now <laughs> Once they leave the funeral Maybe home, that's what the the guy in the current <laughs> coroner thinks. These bodies are mine. Yeah. <laughs> you elected me <laughs> so that I could uh, lord over the uh, the dead. Yeah. As a living god. I'm the prince of dirt. And I <laughs> yeah, decide who right. gets turned into what. I am uh, putting the puzzle together and I would say I know best who should go where. Sometimes <laughs> you stack them, sometimes you spread them out. Go side by side if it's a big corpse. Let a little guy in there, too. I'll do a wing tee like I play for Navy, <laughs> and I will run the damn ball six feet into the... Well, not six feet. Probably about four feet, because I get tired. And look, this press conference is about me running for county coroner. I don't want to talk about the whereabouts of the man formerly known as Sam Talent, <laughs> and now known as the Wash Basin Poet. <laughs> does he communicate with me through tidbits? Yes, he does. <laughs> He takes out a quarter panel ad every week, and he tells me the coordinates of where he's going to be and where I need to be by what time. All right? We're still doing comedy. We're, yeah. We're, I'm still doing stand-up. Yeah. And the shows have not sold any better. Uh, this is the, the best tickets I ever sell, because people want to see a man just devolve into madness. Mm -hmm. They want to see the train wreck. I saw the Sam T. show in Chattanooga. He went up there, and he just uh, communicated like a dog. He was like, <laughs> her, her. Do you see the show where he had the parrot? No. Sam T had a parrot and it did all his jokes for him. He trained it to speak all of his jokes. <laughs> the wash tub basin poet. Yeah, I mean, I just think it'd be kind of cool to just sleep under the stars. and That was their big play. That's crazy. You're, rom you're romanticizing 
a life without a home, but you've also been yearning for a place to call your own. So I don't know if what I could you just, want, but you want it now. I'm a complex man. If I could break the hold of a domicile completely, because I've just been staying in hotels. And look, it's fun. I love it. It's nice to be out there. But God, if the only blanket that I had was the stars, and the only bed that I had was a cactus, <laughs> if I could beat pain to the point where I'm living on top of a cactus, that'd be fun. Gnarled. I eat scorpions. The snakes are afraid of me. Whoa. Mm-hmm. That'd be crazy. That's what I'm talking about, man. You become poisonous? Yeah. <laughs> you develop your own venom? Well, I've been reading rant, so my whole world is just consumed by different neurotoxins. Which one is that? Rant's the one where the guy is like addicted. He has rabies, and he's addicted to like spreading rabies. Is that right? He's a big serial killer. It's an oral history. It's one of the better Chuck books. I Chucky feel, P. I feel like I read it, but it's you been probably a while. did. I think I read it too, but I forgot about it, and then I'm rereading it because I read Fantastic <coughs> Land. Survivor is really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, I might go on a big Chucky P. Uh, tear and just get back to my roots. Choke, choke is killer, dude. Chokes I mean, ghost killer, stories yeah. like the greatest. Mm. You ever read that one? Yes. Yeah, it's it's the. It uh, wasn't called that. Is it called Haunted? Haunted. That's right. Yeah, right. it's the yes. anthology. That ghost was, stories by Peter good. Straub, and it's very good. Yeah, man, books, man, they're out there. You can read them. Books. There's Chew no law on against them. it. Chew them up. They're just wood. Books. Read them. You, These are fancy trees. Seems like if you liked chewing on toilet paper, you would have also enjoyed maybe ripping a page or two out of a book. And, so I didn't want to talk about it, but I did eat half of a Goosebumps book once. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning. So you didn't know what was going on in the second half. It was a real cliffhanger. No, I, I ate every other chapter. Mm. Mm. I was like... Like uh, Naked Lunch. Yeah, exactly. I was like Burroughs uh, doing pastiches. You're like Joe Burroughs. Yeah, I love Joe Author Burroughs. Of Naked Lunch. Yeah. I, Joe Burroughs, Junkie and Queer, those are great novels. Mm. He's like, everyone who's not a Bengal is a queer. <laughs> and I'm a junkie for football. My face is so pretty. If you put a wig on me, every dude would want to fuck me. <laughs> they did that thing where they did the face swaps. Do you remember that? The f yeah, the the lady, pretty lady versions of NFL QBs. Trevor Lawrence was just the same, and I was like, uh, check, please. Wood. Can, <laughs> yeah, I have wood. And I would. And I would. Uh, check I... my undies for Peter Marks, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a salt Peter and a vinegar Pete. And here we are at halftime. Army 10. Navy Zero. Yep. Just the way that God wanted it to go. God, all God's these, an army, man. All these guys. All these fucking guys. They think they're doing the right thing. They changed their last name to Army. Oh, wait, no. They never, bought ne in never completely mind. to the system. Never mind. The, the Navy people get to have their last names. They get to be an individual. But the Army people are like, we are Army. We have no name. I'm only Army. I'm a selection of numbers, and I exist inside of a hand. And my that hand squeezes. My arms are guns, and my legs are grenades, <laughs> and my dick is a tank. And my wife is... Uh, Hiding from me. <laughs> yeah, my my wife's a hobo because she knows I could find her if if she had so much as a street address or a hotel that she stayed in for more than two nights. If I had a strand of her hair, <laughs> I could get her anywhere in these forty eight contiguous states. I joined the army so I could finally see my kids. I'm gonna track them down. NCIS Sydney. This is why we got to watch more network TV, dude. No, no, no. Yeah. No. Whoa, black guy shopping it's for a bad. truck? Hey. Whoa. Get us a truck. Dog. Muslim sales associate? What's going on here? Man, there's no white people in this commercial. What yeah, the fuck? This sucks. <laughs> and, you know, you can't have, like, uh, just a regular, uh, you know, couple now. You can't just have a monogamous male female couple. So in this commercial, we have, a, a, you know, a middle aged black guy, and then he's married to a little boy. <laughs> Is that, that what we're seeing here? I don't think that's what was happening. Was it his son? You know what that just made me think of? Roast beef. Markley Motors. The commercials oh, yeah. I did. That lady's 
Ladies Roast Beef was past the expiration date. Dude, <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Ladies Pussy Stank. Dude, so it reeked. We get into a brand new car and it doesn't smell like leather. It smells like vajay, like 54-year-old vagino. Wasn't she the owner's daughter? It, they were all family. <laughs> yeah, so they're just in so there. It was, yeah, I don't know that there was like a... Uh, a patriarch but it was definitely like <laughs> there were like three uh, siblings yeah, okay. that that ran things yeah and, and they're she like was jessica we know that's you she was very nice yeah but yeah it was like oh so we're just gonna not say anything about this for sure i mean how could you but you know what's funny about that how could you my grandpa <laughs> could tell which one of his kids or grandkids had dumped he could tell by the smell whose dump it was yeah, because he was wiping you all. Well, he would wipe us, yes. But then even as we got older, I remember... Oh, yeah. Just going I, into the I, bathroom. I came into my grandpa's house, and I was like, oh, my... It was like my grandpa was there with my grandma <laughs> and my Aunt Theta and her two daughters. And I came in from after school, and I was like... Because the bathroom was right in front of the front door. You open the front door, the bathroom's right there. Perfect. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it stinks. Oh, my God, who was that? And my grandpa goes, that was Alita. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, he was good. <laughs> he was the best in the that, that was his. That was his superpower. Well, my grandpa literally was like a fur trapper during the Depression. My grandpa was a hobo who would ride a train to Philadelphia and work in a textile mill. And then he would come home to drop off his check to his evil aunt who took in the kids for the money the government would pay after his mom and dad died. So he would come back from Philadelphia and he would show up and Chester and Ted would be there. And then he would take them out trapping. And they would get like skunk and foxes, whatever they could get in the Missouri, Kansas wilds. And then they would skin them and bring them back and sell them in town. But my grandpa was like an expert trapper and he had a nose like a fucking bloodhound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. He was the best, dude. I wish we could have my grandpa on the pod. He was like a dog person, but without the brain damage. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Listen to the Patreon. You know what I just thought about is last night Gianna after Michaels. one of those. No, but oh. she's, she's still goaded. She followed me. Jacked it to her like two days ago. Holy shit. Sam Hyde followed me on Instagram and Shh. so did a Gianna account. Yeah, but I don't think she has an official one. No, it's not the official, but, but still. That was a big day for me. <laughs> so after, I think, the early show last night, Dentist Palooza, there was that young lady that said, Hey, are either of you taxidermists? And we said, No. And she goes, You want to stuff my pussy anyway? <laughs> and her husband went, Okay. Oh, time to go <laughs> there. All right, Janet. You had a couple too many cocktails. Might be time to skedaddle. Yeah. And then you were like, You know, that joke's good, but what if you said, You want to stuff my beaver anyway? And she went, <laughs> No. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> she Becker, didn't say that. Hit us with a toasty. Toasty. <laughs> toasty. What the fuck? <laughs> What the hell? I forgot about that, and now I'm confused all over again. I don't get it. How did we biff it that hard? Uh, I don't, because I, I don't know, dude. It fits into the schema you have in your head of how things work, and all of a sudden, but, that's I just mean, a core we, memory. We agreed. Like, it wasn't like we weren't sure, or one of us was, you know, we weren't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're all dead anyway. Yeah. This is all just a simulation. <laughs> We're all in Elon Musk's testicles right now, <laughs> just waiting to get hatched. We got to get in that sauna again, dude. Me and London oh, sauna guys. Oh, baby. Now. Holy you, shit. I practically had to drag you kicking and screaming into the sauna. You're yeah. like, why would I go into a sauna? I don't like being hot. I don't like sweating. I don't want to be nude with my best friend. And I said, get in here. Mm -hmm. And I, I got you in there and you complained. We were in there for 10 seconds. You were like, oh, so this is a sauna, huh? And I was like, dude, we just turned it on. It'll heat up. It'll, and it was. It, it was great. And I'm glad that you liked it. I, I that loved were, it, dude. It, we, I felt really nice after. It was rejuvenating. Look at Rick Neuheisel dressed like <laughs> we should, <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> we should, <laughs> Indiana Jones. Yeah. Mr. Jones. It, uh, it would be cool if we could have this set up in the sauna. Oh, my nude. God. Nude. We're nude. We're obviously. nude. We have little towels. How about that little nine-year-old kid that came and swam by himself? Is he a tiny businessman? Is he emancipated from his parents, Drew Barrymore style? Do is he so annoying? Is he such a little quebus that his parents were like, "Why don't you go swim unsupervised for a while? Uh -huh. Give us a break." Hey, why don't you put these lead ingots in your pants <laughs> pockets as you get in the pool there? Here, take a bunch of quarters and go swimming. <laughs> yeah, and then whichever uh, whichever quarters are still in your pockets, you can spend on Mortal Kombat. <laughs>
Toasty. Yeah, dude. I uh, did not like that kid in there. And also, <laughs> well, it's like me and you were in there. We're fine. No one's in there. And then young couple with baby comes in. And with, they fucking. Yeah, with th- two month old baby. Two month old baby. Diaper is full. Bulging. <laughs> <laughs> Your grandpa would have known who shit those yeah, diapers. Uh-huh. That diaper right away. That's a huggy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that baby had peas and carrots. Yeah, had that, a little apple juice. Mm-hmm. That mom snuck a cigarette. <laughs> Virginia Slim. That mom is bottle feeding. <laughs> she doesn't remember. She didn't really have them. She didn't have them. The baby was new. They were not full. It's like, bitch. <laughs> Where'd you get pick that? a side? Where'd yeah. you find that baby? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whose child is that? Because there's no milk in those bags. Whose child is this? You know, it's an old church song, I think. You know, what's fun is uh, when people are leaving the club and you're standing there receiving them. They're telling you (laughs) that you're the best ever. Well, dude, yeah, you can you can clock who has them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's tougher in the town too. Tougher in the winter time. Not when they're in that room. They come out. They're putting their jackets. They're putting it on, which means their arms are back like this, which means that the gals are on full display. And you're like, "Uh, (laughs) "Hey, I gotta talk to you two for a minute." (laughs) There was an issue with your tab. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, yeah, I guess I missed a great pair Thursday night. I did not notice. You and Rich were like, and I didn't notice because I was doing my job. That's the only reason I do stand up. <laughs> so I can clock six sets as they leave. It's so funny. Like, I love and hate seeing dudes checking out chicks' tits or, or at buttholes. Well, yeah, when they do the ZZ top as the girl walks by and they're like, <laughs> what's well, not even that? I hate when it's, Ooh. I hate, and, and, and I've had to like, it's like a conscious thing that you have to make sure you don't have dead eyes when right. you check out. There's something that you can do, like if you don't think about it and, and, and you check out a lady, you just look like you're fucking a serial killer. Yeah, when your mouth is agape and your eyes are scabbed over because they haven't blinked and you look over and you're like, those pants are luckier than my mother was when I was born. It's just primitive, yeah. Yeah, I know, but that's okay, man. So you have to still have light in your eyes and just kind of look around and then, oh, yeah, look. Mm -hmm. And that's all you have to do. And you can't stare like a fucking psycho. But, yeah, guys will just be like, yeah, Dude, fucked up. Be better. Yeah, hey, it's not like we spent last night Googling Wisconsin Badgers volleyball team topless. No, we We didn't. didn't do that as a group. We were told to from Katie. Yeah. The staff. Mm-hmm. So it's bring it up with her. The blood's on her hands. But she hey. made me look up Wisconsin volleyball topless. Yeah, and hey, if you're one of these creeps that wants to see a bunch of fucking division one athletes celebrating the Big Ten championship in the locker room with their tits out, that's on you. All right. Uh, if you want to watch the three minute and thirty six second video that's out there, <laughs> oh yeah, from, go nuts from a total perv who was zooming in on the video. Yeah, does the guy rating z- everything? Does he zoom the stills of the video just so you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yeah, he does. Hmm. I didn't. I I didn't watch it a couple times. <laughs> I didn't go back to the room and watch it on point two five speed. <laughs> I didn't do that. I believe you. Yeah. It was pretty cool, though. Wisconsin Badger volleyball well, topless. How how many sports teams? What is it like? One in three are doing that shit after every other game. Yeah, imagine if it was the men's basketball team. They're 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 having nude fun, they're like just whipping each other with their dicks from twelve feet across. They're brothers. They've gone through heaven and hell together, mm-hmm. and so you let off some tension. By flopping dong, come out of the shower naked. Like the jockeys, they're dicking around, sack taps. Dude. That's part of it, you know? Did we talk about those little jockeys on here? Yeah. We did? Yeah. Okay. I didn't look at their dicks. You did. Oh, for sure. Pat had a camera. Patrick had dead eyes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you come here often? Cool dick. Yeah. Jockey cock is a real sacred treat. Not everyone gets to clock those, but I did. Yeah, I didn't. Why didn't I, you peep I was their curious. little meat? I was curious, but it felt weird to just come in all of a sudden like we were with john hayes who knew everybody so that helped a little lead singer of flesh mother but we're still just like four dudes one of them has a camera around his neck Mm -hmm. that he's pointing at people he's breathing through his mouth his glasses are fogged he's super hard Mm -hmm. so which for pat i don't know it felt 
I didn't want to be caught eye contact with a nude person and then and then they clock me going down to the to the junk area. Well, that's so. why you got to be one of those guys who can't make eye contact. I saluted ever. them instead. Mm-hmm. Thank you, horse boy. Thank you, <laughs> little. I'm a man. Old. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, horse man. <laughs> Thank you, horse cock Jones. Hold me closer, tiny horse man. I think we have to do an ad read vamp. Ride the horse to the horizon. Put some pants over your huge dick before the kids arrive. And if you're tired of your dick not being fully prominent and visible from across the room. Prominent. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish my dick had ever or will ever be described as prominent. I wish there was more stature to my cock. I have a background dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have an extra Extras, dick. Extras, yeah. No, no speaking role. Yeah, your dick just has to say watermelon. <laughs> you get 50 bucks to hang out the whole day. Uh-huh. And you don't get any fucking craft services. And fucking uh, Damon Wayans Jr. is the starring <laughs> character yes. that I cannot get around to get in camera. Your dick cannot make eye contact with Sigourney Weaver. But you know what you can do? You can give the greatest gift to your loved ones this Christmas. Family annihilation. <laughs> yeah, free them from this mortal coil. Get them out of here. God forbid they move on and have a nice life without you screaming at them all the time. No, take them with you. Drag them in three bodies in one grave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trinidad style. Oh, fuck. And you it's know a what, nightmare. You Sorry. know what you got to do when Sorry, you kill Trinidad. someone? Is take a trophy. And what you can do is you can shave their pubes using Manscaped products. <laughs> Did you kill your wife? Did you kill her sister because she was sleeping over because she was in between opportunities? <laughs> Well, you know what you do? Once you put that baby in the microwave, (laughs) (laughs) you shave their pubes and you make a little hat with Manscaped (laughs) products. Nobody's going to do it for you. It's time to take control of your life with Manscaped. (laughs) That's the direct copy. Take control of your wife. Yeah, take control of it. Have things gotten out of control and you're living a life that you can't imagine ever having, where it's just picking up the kids from soccer. Uh, maybe on a good night, you get to go to Sonic and get your Route 44 that no one knows about, and you drink it in the part the driveway, listening to talk radio, because it's just a little bit time that you have. Their new performance package 5.0 includes the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Body Trimmer, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, and their patented... Wow, their Crops Soother Aftershave Lotion and Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, which is an untraceable neurotoxin that will not be picked up in an autopsy. <laughs> wow. Huh. I know that when I was trying to uh, get rid of Gordy, when I was trying to rid our family of the curse known as Gordy, oh, Gordy. I was sneaking a little bit of the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant into everything I fed him. It's not a neurotoxin. It says right here. I'm reading the copy. This is directly from Manscaped. That's wild. It's nuts, man. Yeah, and it says that there's not a... Uh, What's it say right here? It says that they do not have the science yet to catch up to what our deadly neurotoxin can provide. And... You can get away with anything with it. Underline anything. Reiterate anything. Personal Damn. endorsement. Well, I did. I killed my dog with their ball deodorant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You put it on your balls. I said, and Gordy. Then Gordy came over and had a snack. It's time for your last meal. <laughs> the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra does all the heavy lifting with two next-gen blade heads. Next-gen blade heads. Next-gen blade heads. Next-gen blade heads. And it's even waterproof. So if you want to... It, in the hot tub. Well, yeah. Or we if could, you if you drown your wife, then you can shave her pubes underwater. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, well, I'm saying we could fucking get it on in the hot tub. I shaved in the shower yesterday, and then I had to reshave in bed because I missed a bunch of patches. <laughs> God. I was just nude in bed, Good wet, you have two shaving. Beds. I have two beds. One for the shaven, one for the... Craven. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's even waterproof, so you can knock out your shaving routine with, while you shower. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code CHUBBY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code C-H-U-B-B-Y. Holy fuck. Support the show and use Manscaped because, hey, it's Christmas and there's a lot of pressure on you to provide a big pile of gifts under the tree. And you know what you don't have to do that for? You know who you don't have to buy gifts for? Your parole officer. No, your dead family. (laughs) (laughs) Their gift is uh, eternal salvation in heaven. So, (laughs) manscape, kill your family. Uh, Lund. (laughs) 
Taste death, live life. <laughs> well, and where are you going to be? <laughs> oh, I'm going to be home in Trinidad, yeah. trying to get to the bottom of these crazy corner Dude, shenanigans. Do a podcast about it. Yeah, true crime. Yeah, because Becker's starting his car his car podcast with known master boarder Brent Gill. Cargo Fast. Yes, Cargo Check Fast. Check out Cargo Fast <laughs> with Brent and Jakey. Uh, which head wound and Harry. <laughs> Uh, I'm not doing shit. I'm laying low until we are in Chicago Zanies, January 4th, 5th, 6th. That's right. Downtown Chicago, first week. Old Town. Old Town, Mold Town. The good one. Black Mold and a little sub- girl smile. None of this Rosemont suburb bullshit. And come on out, guys, because I'm going to be doing the new bathtub basin thing where I'm there, <laughs> and I've got a big, long birch Ooh. twig, Ooh. and... And I just got like a old, the rag that I wash myself with is like a old timey judges wig. Flag. No, uh, no, but yeah, the tub is painted with the stars and bars. Yes, uh-huh. and I say these colors don't wash oh, out. So yeah, come to that, and then uh, Nashville Zanies. My God, I'm gonna be there next Wednesday after three days down in Texas, <laughs> going down to Austin Way to. Uh, do a little promo for this upcoming special here now. Slap around Ron White. <laughs> Ronnie want a white? <laughs> Say it, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Say it once. See how it feels. <laughs> Try it on. Ronnie want a white. Those are his last words. <laughs> and then Rogan comes in, and I'm shaving Ron's pubes, and he's like, I get it, man. I get it. You gotta kill God to become God. <laughs> All right. I'll leave you the room. Joe is putty. Yeah. I'm Joe Rogan. <laughs> it's me, Rogan. Eat that hor- pe- horse penis. Eat the whole cock. <laughs> chew it up. <laughs> That's spaghetti. Shove you that chew octopus it. in your pee hole. Dude, you know what I actually want to do with my life is I want to make uh, homemade pasta, and I want to make homemade cheese, and I just want to move into fucking somewhere in France and be done with this whole crazy circus game we call standing up comedy. You want to be the barefoot contessa. I do, dude. I want to be married to Jeffrey. I want to have a gay little husband who comes on camera to drink my daiquiri that I make him, and he always has a (laughs) sweater wrapped around his neck, tied just perfectly, and he goes, mmm, this is scrumptious. (laughs) (laughs) Jeffrey's always like she's always did you watch that show? <laughs> no. It rules, dude. She'd always be like, mm, it's Jeffrey's pool party tonight. And all the <laughs> boys are coming over. And I gotta make sure that they have their favorite finger foods. It's pigs in a blanket and meatballs. Anything they can all fit in their mouths and chew up and swallow. They love it. <laughs> so let's make Jeffrey and his little friends dinner. And then Jeffrey and the boys would show up wearing like, you know, fucking banana hammocks. <laughs> And be like, chase me. <laughs> she just had the gayest husband in the history of dudes. <laughs> yeah. I loved that show. She was so good at what she did. I yeah, She's just kind I've, of a blob woman, amorphous. She's not a blob woman. That's how she self-described. Hi. Those were her pronouns. Welcome to Blob Contessa. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Shapeless Contessa. Welcome to Where Did My Feet Go? They Were Swallowed by the Blob. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll find them, honey. <laughs> What's this slime? Is it from the Blob or from the boys? <laughs> God, Barefoot Contessa ruled. And then, dude, the crazy... PBS? No, that was on like the Food Network. Ina Garten was her name. Ina Garten. But, dude, what was the name of the fucking lady with the huge oh, jumbos? Yeah, you told oh, me about her. Oh, my God. God, she'd be brawless and like uh, she'd be like Gianna Sorrentino. I don't know, but she'd be like whipping up whipped cream in a bowl without a bra on and just shaking them around. And I'd Whoa. be like, "Uh, I made whipped cream. <laughs> I whipped my cream." Mom, don't come in. I'm learning how to cook. <laughs> in today's episode, Jeffrey and the boys are all getting matching tattoos on their lower backs. <laughs> <laughs> and after they get out of there, they're going to need a spicy gazpacho. <laughs> she's very horny. She's sexy. Sexy she, voice. She's not not sexy, you know? And she'd be like, okay, boys, <laughs> come on in. And they're just wearing ball gags and masks and shit. No. Yeah, and it's like, Come oh. off it. After a crazy, ruleless gangbang, you know what the boys need? hearty stew stew. <laughs> yeah. uh, stew didn't make it potato, potato leak stew stew couldn't come my but pota- i did my potatoes leaking 
<laughs> it shows his dick. It's yeah. huge and thick like a big old potato. And hey, if you like this kind of content, please join our Patreon, everyone. Oh, fuck, dude. Patreon.com slash Shelby Behemoth. I forgot. There's a million episodes on there. Get on the Patreon and then say, Les Lund, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> hey, quit doing your podcast. <laughs> you can't read the comments, bro. I did get I, notification. Well, I did read that one to you last night. <laughs> yeah, I had already <laughs> I seen it. I shotgunned an edible soda. I had already seen it. <laughs> yeah. Then I heard it. Then I read it. I then told, somebody told me again uh, in a letter. I reiterated it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the constructive criticism and the feedback. That's erasure. Okay? We don't do that here. <laughs> I can't be erased. I can be annihilated. But you have to have the amulet, and good luck finding it. It's yeah. in a deep, dark cave. I swallowed it. <laughs> That's right. It's in your cave. It's inside of me. It's in your carapace. I got to keep him safe. Carapace. But yeah, go join our Patreon. Come uh, on, God damn it! Come on, man. We want to get to a thousand. We're getting there. We're scratching and sniffing. Yeah, we're right around a thousand. We got to get those numbers up. Patreon.com slash show behemoth. Um, yeah, uh, Chicago is coming up. Fort Collins, Colorado, the comedy fort, a couple days before Christmas. Comes to me in Nashville. I just added Knoxville. I'm doing a Don't Tell Knoxville uh, next Thursday. You're not supposed to tell. Yeah, but, well, hey, who cares? And then who also, cares? how about this? Uh, uh, I love you guys, and I'm grateful for you guys. And thank you for coming out to all the shows and scaring the shit out of dentists, because I appreciate it. Keep on slamming a Nathan of mushrooms and then going to the show yourself wearing your <laughs> ostrich boots. No. <laughs> what were they? Snake? They were snake, Snake dude. boots. Hunter, Shout dude. Shout out to Hunter, bro. Shout out to Jared in Milwaukee. Shaka. We love you guys. Good night. Adios.